So far in this course, every piece of state we've managed has used the useState hook. We worked with numbers, strings, booleans, objects, and arrays. But React gives us another hook for managing state, and it's called useReducer. Now I could start by explaining why we need another state management hook when useState works great, but I want to take a different approach. We will first understand what useReducer is and how it works. Once we walk through a few examples, we will naturally start to see when and why useReducer is a better fit than useState and we'll be able to identify the perfect scenarios for each hook. Let's start by understanding the name itself, useReducer. Why reducer? Where does that come from? To understand that, we need to step away from React for a moment and look at plain JavaScript. In particular, array.prototype.reduce. If we open the MDN docs for reduce and scroll down to the description, you can see it says, the reduce method is an iterative method. It runs a reducer callback function over all elements in the array in ascending index order and accumulates them into a single value. Let's look at the example they provide at the top of the page. We have an array with four numbers, one, two, three, and four. We also have a constant initial value set to zero. In the next line, we have array.reduce with a reducer function that takes two parameters, accumulator and current value. The function returns their sum, accumulator plus current value. When we call array.reduce and pass this reducer function, it processes each element and gives us 10. Here is a step-by-step -step breakdown of what happens. We start with zero, which is the initial value. First, we add one, zero plus one, we get back one. Then we add two, one plus two, we get back three. We add three, three plus three, we get six. And finally, we add four, six plus four, we get 10. The important thing to understand is that reduce takes many values and reduces them down to a single value. The reducer function is what defines how that reduction happens. In this case, by adding numbers together. Now, why did we look at this JavaScript method? Because React's useReducer hook uses the same core idea. It uses the concept of a reducer function, but applies it to state management instead of arrays. The structure is similar. Both take a reducer function and both begin with some kind of initial value or initial state, but the reducer functions themselves take different parameters. With reduce, the reducer receives the accumulator and the current value. With use reducer, the reducer receives state and an action. Now what is an action? For now, just know, it's a way to describe what happened in your application. We will see plenty of examples soon, but think of it as a message saying, the user clicked this button, or this form was submitted, or add a new item to the list. The reducer looks at this action and decides how to update the state. The other big difference is what you get back. The array reduce method returns a single value, but use reducer, like use state, returns an array with two items. The first item is your current state, just like with use state. The second item is called dispatch. This is a function you will use to send those actions we talked about to the reducer. Now, I know this might feel like a lot of new concepts, reducers, actions, dispatch. And if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, that's completely normal. But trust me, once we start writing code and you see these pieces working together, it all starts to make sense. So to summarize, useReducer is another hook for state management in React. It accepts two parameters, a reducer function and the initial state. The reducer function itself accepts two parameters, the current state and an action. Based on these inputs, it returns the new state and along with it, a dispatch function. You call dispatch to trigger state updates. Now that we understand the core idea, Let's start building some examples so you can see exactly how useReducer works in a real React component.